Well, hello, hello, astrology lovers, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Ildiko, and I'm going to talk in this video about at the April astrology, including two new moons. One of them is going to be a solar eclipse and a full moon, and of course, the aspect of the year. So this is going to be a very pivotal month of the year so stay with me but thank you for joining me here and if you are new here i welcome you in my astro tribe please subscribe and uh, hit the notification notification button uh, to get new videos and if you are already part of my astro tribe uh, thank you so much uh, for supporting my channel just by watching it uh, thank you uh, for all the lovely comments they honestly they do keep me going uh, they really inspire me to do even more so please keep them coming Right, so let's jump right into the month of April. So as I said, it's going to be a very pivotal month um, because of more than one reason. So one of them is going to be the one um, because uh, it's going to, going to be a solar eclipse at the end of the month. The other one, why April is a special month, is because uh, it's going to occur two new moons. And that's what we call, uh, you know, a blue moon. Once in a blue moon, I'm sure you have heard the expression when something happens very, very rarely. And that's the case with April's lunation. On the 1st of April, there's going to be a new moon in Aries. And that is going to be the first new moon of the year, of the astronomical year. When the sun reaches the, the zero degree of Aries, and this is going to occur in, in the 20th of March. Aries is being the first sign of the zodiac. That's when uh, nature, the spring is coming in the northern hemisphere at least. Now, it's also going to be a special month because of the solar eclipse uh, occurring on the 30th of April. Not to mention, there's going to be two... <clears throat> very pivotal cycles uh, beginning uh, this month. Uh, one of them is going to be the aspect of the year with Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. I'm going to make a longer video about that. Um, so stay tuned, but I'm going to discuss in more detail why that um, <clears throat> Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is going to be very, very pivotal for the collective and for the individual as well. And it's also going to be another New cycle beginning with Saturn and Mars, that's going to be the less positive one, uh, but uh, I must warn you about that as well, so please stay tuned. Now, there's also going to be just a couple of days after the new moon, a Mercury Kazemi, but let's not go ahead of uh, myself. Uh, let's just start with the new moon in April. So the first new moon of the astronomical year um, is going to occur on the 1st of April. Yes, the 1st of April, the Fool's Day. However, this new moon is not going to be fooling us, hopefully. It's going to denote new beginnings, new initiatives, a pioneering new endeavors that happen very, very quickly. We know the sign of Aries is a very, very quick action-oriented sign. Uh, that Now, this new moon is going to have a close conjunction to Mercury. So what does that mean? Mercury is the planet of communication. So the new beginnings is going to involve uh, things such as contracts, studies, journeys, marketing, writings, and communication, more than likely. Uh, now, Jupiter and Neptune are already coming close to the conjunction. So they are within the uh, orb uh, the allowance or degree allowance so because of that there's going to be a feeling of faith that everything is possible but in the meantime there's also a, a more uh, serious conjunction is happening between Mars and Venus they are still together in the sign of Aquarius and they are in the middle of them, it's Saturn. So because of that, we are going to be very, very realistic, if not cold, with regards to our relationships and our financial implications. Um, so that's briefly about the new moon. Now, on the 3rd of April, this is still the new moon phase because we talk about the new moon phase until the moon reaches the first uh, quarter. Okay, 
So on the 3rd of April, that's the day when I think you should, uh, if you begin anything special or, or if you do your Newman intentions, uh, which I have um, uh, new intention rituals on my website I, I will put a link down below for you for your you know if you like uh, if you are into rituals I'm always into rituals um, you know uh, to write down your goals or to meditate on what is uh, you know uh, the best for for that time um, to, to begin uh, so that's going to be the day when I suggest you doing it. Okay, so not on the first, but on the third. And I tell you exactly why. So on the third of April, still in the new moon phase, but the moon will have moved over to Taurus. Now, moon is exalted in Taurus, as well as the sun is exalted in Aries. And that only occurs once a year. And especially to have a full moon like that, um, it's just going to enhance your, your rate of success with regards to your anything that you begin, you know, any mercurial that you may begin, you know, a contract you might sign. Uh, try to point it around the 3rd of uh, April. Now, it's also going to happen uh, a phenomenon called Mercury Kazemi. Okay, on the third, and I'm going to. That's only going to happen for a couple of a couple of hours. Stay with me because at the end of this video, I'm going to come back to Mercury Kazemi, and I'm going to tell you exactly when uh, that is going to happen. Okay, so the Mercury Kazemi is considered invisible. That's because the Sun and the Mercury are in the exact conjunction. Now, if you think about it, you can't look into the Sun. So because of that, you won't be able to see Mercury. Uh, so to the astrologers, um, that position considered uh, invisible and burnt. Um, just think about the myth of Icarus who flew too high and because of that, uh, uh, you know, his wings uh, got broken and uh, the wax melted and he fell down to his own death. Uh, however, these couple of hours, whilst Mercury is in exact conjunction or within 17 minutes of that conjunction, it's going, uh, it's called that when uh, Mercury is in the heart of the sun. And during those hours, um, in the morning or in the afternoon, wherever it happens to you, you need to do your uh, you know, time change, uh, whatever you are in the world. There's, um, there might be an important message delivered to you by Mercury, which we know uh, he was the messenger of the gods in the legend, uh, in the myth, he was Hermes, the messenger of the gods. Uh, so keep yourself open to hear a message. Um, it could be coming in different form to you. Uh, it could be coming in, uh, in a form of dream. Um, if you are sleeping or it could you could receive a, an important message from somewhere. Um, you could hear something in the television or in the radio if you turn it on that the possibilities are endless, but you will know that that is your special news for today. Okay, so as I said, in the 5th of, Ma uh, of April, uh, another conjunction is going to occur, which is uh, kind of less fortunate. Uh, it's the Mars and Saturn conjunction. Now this is going to begin a new cycle. Now the previous cycle uh, with regards to Mars and Saturn uh, happened on the 31st of March in 2020. And many of you, you remember that that was the aspect that started off the pandemic. Uh, now this cycle is closing as perhaps you already noticed there is nothing in the news about the pandemic no one is talking about that now there are other um, unsettling news in the television as we uh, all know now this is going to begin a new cycle for the next two years to come and the new cycle is going to be uh, something about rules and regulations uh, it will carry the energy of saturn and mars and these are the two malefics of the zodiac uh, so the essence of this union is going to be of new rules and regulation introductions or new restrictions that perhaps is going to leave us very frustrated and angry and annoyed for sure 
Now, on the good note, Venus is going to enter Pisces, and this is uh, such a relief for um, this lovely planet, um, um, goddess Aphrodite, who is the planet of love and money and relationships and peace as well. Uh, she hasn't been happy in the last couple of months. She was as Perhaps some of you know that, you know, she was retrograde for 40 days in the sign of Capricorn, which is, it's an okay position, but not, it's okay position with regards to maybe business and finances, but not so much with regards to relationships. Um, and then she was then chased by Mars. Um, they kept meeting a couple of times and then she met with Pluto. And that was again, a drag down to the underworld once again. And then she was conjuncting um, Saturn as well. Uh, so she will be relieved to enter her sign of exaltation, which is um, um, the sign of Pisces. Here, uh, she will uh, make us uh, enjoy more um, about um, spirituality, embracing love and compassion. We all are going to become a little bit more compassionate uh, with regards to our loved one. It will enhance our intuition, uh, our love for water, and poetry, dreams, and meditation. It is a very beautiful and very, very gentle energy. Uh, Venus, when is in her sign of excitation, and we know that Venus uh, denotes peace as well because she just wants to collaborate. She just wants to uh, make peace with everyone and keep everybody happy, uh, keep everybody diplomatic. So there's more chance for such things when Venus in her sign of exaltation. Now on the 13th of April, the big conjunction of the year is going to occur, you guys, and that begins a new cycle. This is the aspect of the year. And not only because Jupiter and Neptune conjunctions, they only happen every 13 year, but also um, it was long, long, long time ago when Jupiter and Neptune have met in their sign of exaltation um, and in, in their sign of rulership, sorry, not exaltation, but rulership is even better. So Jupiter is the old ruler of Pisces, whereas Neptune is uh, the modern ruler of Pisces. And the last time they have aligned in that, uh, in that, um, conjunction it was in 1856 yes this is how long ago it was now both planets having the rulership in Pisces uh, now this conjunction was closely related to spirituality and the belief system so there's no wonder that in 1856 was the year when Russia signed the treaty to end the Crimean war which was fought mostly because of religion tensions and between Catholics and Orthodox believers. There's no brainer that uh, we can hope for something similar to happen. So this war that is out there now, it also fought for something Neptunian, which is gas and oil. So I'm expecting some sort of um, similar things to happen. Let's hope that there's going to be a treaty again uh, but definitely not before uh, that full moon in um, uh, that not, not before that full moon in April. I don't think so. Uh, now, on the good note, uh, since Pisces is very strongly connected to music and film industry too, there's also a no-brainer. The blues emerged out of this um, beautiful escapist retreating and creative sign. Now, let's not forget Pisces is the most creative sign. Uh, so a new trend in music has emerged and which was uh, blues, as I said, and this was blues was the precursor of R&B and American music. So let's keep our eyes open for something new like that to begin again. So um, something positive is definitely um, are expected from that in terms of uh, music, art, and in terms of spirituality. And let's hope that history will repeat itself again. There's going to be a, a peace treaty signed with that exalted um, Venus in um, 
uh, in Pisces. Is, uh, what I'm hoping that as well, because Mars is going to enter Pisces as well. And uh, Mars is the planet of war. And here it becomes very mild, tempered, and gentle. Uh, it won't assert himself in such a direct fashion. Um, it's going to have less sense of direction. And, you know, Pisces is the sign of retreat. So maybe Mars, you know, will be moving the, the God of War. Uh, maybe it will be moving towards uh, retreating uh, at least for a while. Now, but that is kind of con contradictory a little bit because I don't think it's going to happen before the full moon in Libra. Um, because that is going to be a culmination of power struggle because it has got that full moon in Libra has got a very, very strong uh, square to Pluto. Aries is the sign of war, um, whilst Libra is the sign of, of, of peace. So that is going to be in the collective. There's definitely going to be a, some sort of culmination with regards to power struggle, with regards to peace and war, sovereignty and collaboration, diplomacy and arrogance, uh, relationships and autonomy or intensity and ruthlessness um, that is going to be definitely in play, power struggles, but it could be mitigated by, by, Saturn, uh, by that trine from Saturn. Uh, and that's going to be a trine from, uh, from Mars as well. Uh, so it could be mitigated, um, this tense energy, um, you know, the power struggle, uh, it could be mitigated uh, by you know, being having a sense of responsibility is having a sense of rules and regulation, uh, some forward planning, uh, some sort of cautious strategies because um, Mars is still close to Saturn. So let's see how this is going to play out um, in the collective. Um, with regards to the individual, I'm going to talk about that when I break it down. Uh, to all 12 signs. But the ruler of the full moon is um, is in compassionate Pisces, uh, is the sign of retreats, is going to be sextiling Mercury, the planet of communication. So there's all the hope there uh, to have, you know, to, to have a chance of diplomatic and compassionate discussions, maybe treaties as well. Now the 18th, uh, the certain square between Pluto is going to intensify. That's going to be the day when it's going to be uh, uh, felt the strongest. However, we know that applying um, squares, the applying aspects are the strongest ones. So it will be felt very, very strongly uh, rather beforehand. Uh, now, with Mercury conjunct Uranus in that day, though, we and sextiling Venus, we can expect um, some unexpected news for sure. But let's hope with the sextile to Venus that is going to be uh, uh, a news about retreat or maybe a news about peace or news about something positive. Okay. Uh, now, on the 20th of April, the sun will move into Taurus. So, after this feisty, airy season, things will slow down a little bit, uh, you know, going into the Taurus season. The sun, sun, the sun is moving into this material earth sign. Um, now, it has come the time to uh, enjoy nature or maybe work in nature to cultivate, to nourish the earth which is the symbol of the material, uh, the tangible earth um, in, here in planet Earth. We put in the time and effort in everything we do. So we don't rush things anymore. Uh, we become more practical um, because the primary need of this sign is um, the value and security. Money and possessions are also associated with self-worth and we can indulge in our senses into luxurious goods. And we are also going to be more fixated in accumulating resources uh, to, to be able to found our feeling of security. Now on the 24th, um, Mercury is going to square Saturn, but on the same day, it's going to sextile Neptune again. So that is going to play out quite interestingly. So there's going to be a tension between flexibility and rigidity, freedom and structure. 
the thought process is slow and the communication is going to be somewhat difficult or severely criticized uh, to the point when we might be able to lose enthusiasm. It's the aspect of when the teacher and the, and the student clash that is a rare occasion when the, the student wins. Now, this could also bring blockages in, uh, you know, signing papers, paperwork, or negotiations. Um, it's going to be uh, bring challenges with regards to short journeys. Uh, but Mercury is on, also influenced by a gentle aspect from Neptune. Um, and so maybe that is the day when we. Um, if we can, we can, um, you know, retreat back and enjoy some art and poetry, some maybe meditation, uh, because the mind uh, is going to be somewhat imaginative. On the 27th, Mercury is going to sextile Jupiter. Uh, Moon Venus is going to be conjunct Neptune, uh, not far from Jupiter. So there's going to be definitely good news on the horizon here we can win our confidence back uh, with regards to speaking. Uh, we think big. Uh, we may be able to travel somewhere or at least plan our journeys, maybe abroad, because Jupiter is connected to uh, abroad. Uh, it's going to be definitely a beautiful day that should be filled with compassion, sensual, sensual pleasures, an appreciation of art and spirituality. On the 28th of April, Mercury is going to sextile Pluto. Thinking process is going to be very deep. It's a very good day for research. And we are up for discussion about more serious topics that topics uh, that are doing um, dig down to the roots. Um, it is definitely not a good day for small talk for sure. 30th of April, Venus is going to conjunct Jupiter, and that is going to be uh, the day of the new moon in Taurus, but it's also going to be a partial solar eclipse on the 10th degree of Taurus. Some of you may or may not know that the new moon is, uh, sorry, the solar eclipse uh, is a very important new moon that is triggered by the, uh, the nodes of the moon. And that's when it happens that, um, you know, this, the solar eclipse, the, the sun is going to be eclipsed for a couple of minutes. And um, it, this is usually brings very fated events into our lives. Not everybody's going to be affected though. Uh, but uh, if you are, usually um, <clears throat> unexpected events happen that are life-changing. Um, with regards to the, maybe the house or the planet that it touches. And <clears throat> that's the way how universe puts us into our own path. So very, very important new changes, new beginnings with solar eclipse, usually new beginnings occur that feel very fated and, and uh, you know, destined. Uh, so these new beginnings, this um, going to happen in the sign of Taurus, which is the financial sector. Uh, it is going to affect um, in the collective, the economy, um, the financials, maybe agriculture as well. It's going to be the more material side of the, uh, of the world because Taurus rules purely the material. An element of of surprise and um, unpredictability is definitely going to be there. Uh, but the solar, the eclipses, they carry this element of surprise with them anyway. But now this is going to be enhanced because of this, um, because of um, Uranus, the planet of surprises is going to be there. Uh, so, you know, the new beginnings is going to take place where something unconventional or one, something sudden um, break, it might happen in the financial world, in, uh, in the economical sphere, or especially in the food industry. So expect some breaks or something unconventional happening, uh, something unexpected, or some breaks could happen with regards to, you know, food, financials, and so on and so forth. Uh, new technology could be uh, introduced in this area, okay? So, you know, astrologers have been talking about cryptocurrency for such a long time. 
that could be a trigger for that for sure i can see that happening as well as i can see that happening when uh, over the summer uranus and the north node are going to conjunct which is going to happen on the 31st of july i have talked about that in my yearly horoscope videos now, there's going to also be a Mars sextile, and this will bring uh, energy and enthusiasm and natural bravery to the picture. Uh, so there's going to be passion at play um, to make this plan work out in the future. And the ruler of the eclipse is also going to be exalted in Pisces, expanded by Jupiter. So the new beginnings will carry an element of growth and abundance, generosity, and luck to it. Uh, so let's hope it's going to be a positive growth because we know that Jupiter can bring growth into um, into negative things as well jupiter just simply brings growth to everything it touches but this time is going to be an exalted venus so because of that i'm hoping for something very very positive to happen uh, from this uh, new moon solar eclipse on the 30th of april i did say that i'm going to come back to mercury kazemi for those couple of hours exactly when that is going to happen and so that is going to happen uh, on the 3rd of April. I'm going to tell you the time at GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, uh, which is the time in London, UK at this moment of time. Wherever you live, uh, you have to uh, convert this to your own time zone. So Mercury is going to be Kazemi, is going to be in the heart of the king uh, between the hours of 12.58 p.m. on the 3rd of April uh, all the way to 1758 on the same day so that is going to give you five short hours uh, to, to, to be open and to hear the message. Now let's see all the 12 signs. Dear Sagittarius, you're going to start the month of April with a banging new moon in your fifth house of joy. The, uh, the new moon is going to be in close conjunction with Mercury, the planet of studies and thinking and communication. So that means, you know, new moons are always new beginnings, and these are going to involve contract, going to involve contracts and studies and and journeys and marketing, and writing and communication in fifth house issues and what are fifth house issues these are issues of children not so much issues because this is such a joyful house we couldn't call them issues <laughs> we couldn't could call them matters perhaps so uh, just like children and joy and fun uh, lovers now it is the house of creativity so it is going to be the time to be creative perhaps in writing speaking marketing learning and teaching as well why not uh, remember that mercury is going to be kazemi on the 3rd of april and this is the day also when both of the luminaries sun and the moon are going to be in exalted position and that only happens once a year to, to happen on the day when mercury is going to be kazemi i'm not sure when was the last time this happened it's not too often uh, so just remember the timestamps converted to your time zone. And uh, if you are beginning something very important, uh, then it is a good time to start your initiation on that, on that day for a better success rate. Uh, you could start something, uh, something to do with your children or lovers. Uh, you might meet someone and you start a new love affair. Uh, with somebody or your child could could begin a new learning curve learning curve uh, you need to plant your seeds in these areas uh, but you must already know that because mercury the planet of thinking and communication has been there in your fifth house so my, your mind is very much focusing in these sort of activities now, the energies of the 10th house of career and 7th house of partnerships are going to also move in 
in your fifth house with Mercury. So that means that your career matters and maybe partnership matters are going to play some kind of role in your new intention settings. There's going to be a feeling of faith that everything is possible, but in the meantime, you're very realistic about your financial implications and how far you can go with regards to your actions. And you are also very determined. Now, it is going to be the time to dream big since Jupiter and Neptune are in close conjunction. And at a later point, you are going to be able to manifest that. Now, your decisions are made very quickly and your words are very direct. The sun sheds its beautiful warm light in this creative and divine house of yours. Now, the Mars and Saturn conjunction is taking place in your third house, and this bring, uh, begins a new, uh, a rather difficult cycle, I must say, uh, for two years in, um, in the house of uh, communication. And the Jupiter and Neptune conjunction have, however, a much more pleasant, much more inspirational cycle. And, that, and this begins a new 13-year cycle, which is much more inspirational. Uh, and that is going to happen in your fourth house. Wow. I don't want to talk about them in too much detail because I have already done it with my yearly videos. So look up in the link up there or scroll down in my channel and find your sign, your rising sign. Listen to the Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and Neptune conjunction. Now the full moon in your 11th house will bring culmination for a, in a plan and project that uh, you began two weeks ago, perhaps, or you could have began six months ago with the Libra new moon or even 18 months ago with the previous Libra new moon. This has got to do with the polar opposites of cooperating with your friends um, versus, uh, you know, being in independent um, in your self-expression, especially, especially about your individuality. So you do need to balance out your individual needs uh, versus the uh, with the community uh, spirit uh, you know your, your the spirits of your friends uh, groups and communities that you belong to on the 20th of April the sun is going to leave your fifth house and is going to move into Taurus for the season um, to your sixth house so your shine and your focus is going to shift to your work and health issues. So after this feisty sign of Aries, things are going to slow down a little bit for the next uh, 30 days. So I'm moving into this material, Earth sign has, uh, you know, this will bring you some time to enjoy nature, you know, to be more practical, to organize yourself, and especially in, in you know, in, in, in terms of your six house issues, you know, you, you are going to cultivate and nourish the seeds that you are planted, and so your, 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 your focus is also going to shift on your daily routines, your health and your work. You will take more pride in your work and you can build your skills and you can organize yourself a little bit better. Get rid of things that don't serve you and discover the ones that they do. The last day of the month is going to be a partial solar eclipse, and that is going to occur in your sixth house. Fated new beginnings are going to happen uh, in this house matters, work and health. Uh, you will grow and develop in matters of health, employment and job relationships. And when I'm talking about job relationships, I'm rather talking about the co-workers or even people who are working below you or your employees, perhaps, if you have some. You may adopt new hygienic and nutritional habits. And as a result, you find satisfaction in healthier body. Uh, so the new beginnings could do, could, you know, it could be something with regards to your health for sure. And these are going to be uh, very fated new beginnings. And maybe these are going to be something that you will implement, you know, your health and uh, nutrition habits. They could, they could bring you, uh, you know, lifetime changes. 
You may take actions to improve your work-related health hazards as well. So, for example, you may take action to, to you know, to, to work, to have a work environment which is less polluted. If you have a tendency for hypochondria, uh, this may get worse, uh, unfortunately, during the eclipse season. I must uh, press always that please do not ha expect uh, something to happen on the day of the eclipse. The eclipse season begins way before the eclipse, at least a month before, if not more, and can take up to six months afterwards. So if something doesn't happen, it doesn't mean this uh, eclipse is not affecting you. Especially if you have planets close to the 10th degree of Taurus, which you can check in the link down below. Um, if you cast your chart, um, and so check for personal planets in around the 10th degree of Taurus, Sun, Moon are the most important ones, and then we can move to Mars, you know, Mercury, Venus, uh, Saturn, Jupiter is going to be very important for you, dear Sagittarius, because that is your ruling planet, so uh, look for that one too. Uh, these plants, they can be in, or in around the 10 degrees of Taurus or any other fixed sign such as Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius. So this was my prediction for the month of April for you, dear Sagittarius. I hope that you find some insight here. And if you do value my video, please give me the thumbs up subscribe hit the notification button i'm going to keep on making videos jupiter and neptune conjunction is going to be my next one for manifestation mantras and uh yes keep yourself posted with my videos thank you for watching i'll shall see you soon bye bye